It's time to go to work with Kansas City's entrepreneurs, inventors, brand builders, and business icons. We started to talk about an idea to be that resource. We started the place where entrepreneurs can walk in with an idea and walk out with a company. Our obvious intent and our first priority is the health and well-being of horses, but we also have to run a business. We actually give them an opportunity to gain a GED and really having that hands-on training to be able to do what they need to do to be successful in the community. Experience the hands-on fits and starts of innovative business building going on right here, right now, in our community. This is reality TV that works. Startups made in Kansas City. Come on, come on, get some. Can't you get some? Mark, why are your pants sagging? Why are your pants hanging down? I'm sorry, sir. Are you gonna be late for school? Are you gonna be late for school anymore? You, you know we, that's not acceptable around here. We don't do that, that's push-up. They call me the drill sergeant because we rebuild houses and save lives. What did you do wrong yesterday? Uh, the brushes and the, the paint I left open. So you didn't clean the brushes. Don't you know that brushes cost? We go to Home Depot all the time buying materials. So you need to be responsible for those materials. I need 50 push-ups for that. Give it to the team, give it to the team. The core of the issue is saving lives and also education and training. You know we're in an epidemic across the nation with uh, young people dropping out. Every 26 seconds, a young man or a young woman drops out of school, which is a terrible thing because we know how important education is. So at New Reflections, we actually give them an opportunity to gain a GED and also get some training. Um, we also have entrepreneurial classes where they can learn how to also operate and run their own business and really having that hands-on training to be able to do what they need to do to be successful in the community and help rebuild this beautiful city that we have. How this house thing works is basically we purchase properties in the community. We really like to find more than one property on a block so we can really make an impact on a block. My name is Mika Casey and I am a real estate broker and I do a lot of business with Mark, the drill sergeant. Here in the city, I help him sometimes find houses in the city or he gets them donated and we will go through, kind of talk about what needs to be done. I know we need to do the base uh, and also the trim. The baseboards look pretty rough. Well, this needs to be resealed. I already saw that earlier. The stove goes actually in that corner, then also the refrigerator there. And then we have a washer and dryer hookup we that's on this side. Over here. I know these doors need some work. I can't believe you said you like this hardware because you no, never say you like this hardware. Awful. I can't it's believe it. I can deal with that. This line right here, I want everybody to be very careful. That line, I'm sure, is probably hot from when they stole the air conditioner. You go into a house, it's missing the electrical, the plumbing, the furnace, the hot water tank. The AC is most definitely gone. That's not even something that you should even expect to be there. These are good push-ups. There you go. It's for your education and for your training. That's why you're a college student right now. A lot of the guys can't find work. They have to do something. You have to have some sort of income means or doing something, so this program definitely helps them get some skills, they get a trade, they can now a lot of times do their own business and be successful in life as opposed to falling back into the cycle. It's a hard situation to come home and to possibly be a felon and have no way of really learning how to do a trade to get a job better than maybe a $7.55 job. Uh, we know they need more than that, so we're really all about training and helping and saving lives. Look what you did. You have to pay attention to what's going on. Don't keep doing it. That means move away from it, young man. Strong mind, strong body, strong soul, strong man. That's what New Reflection makes. A lot of kids can't learn in regular school or college. A lot of times they need hands-on training, and I think it's great that he gets them out here, he teaches them a skill, and now they can go and get a job, or they can start their own business doing these things. So I think it's an excellent opportunity for those kids. Kids deserve to have nice homes in their properties to see them, not just broken glass and broken, kicked in doors. Um, so we have to make sure that we deal with the issues at hand. People are dumping trash all over the place, which makes the neighborhood, for those that own their homes and have to live near it, with senior citizens and children, that is a terrible thing. So we try to make sure we do our part to remove those blight issues away from the community. That's pretty much what we do, just make sure that these families find homes and that we help the students learn at the same time. Young man, why are you on your phone right now while we're working? You still want to give me more push-ups, don't you? 
Well, one of our biggest challenges that we face is basically our, our funding, um, grants. You know, grants basically kind of come and go, um, but these lives don't come and go. They're here every day and they're always needing some type of assistance and help. So we want to make sure that we have the funding and things available to really help them uh, grow into the potential that they are, that, that they, they deserve. Of course, this is a business and we have to make sure that these properties uh, can possibly turn a profit. It's hard sometimes to turn a profit on properties that need so much work, um, but we have to. This is definitely a nonprofit organization, but we actually have to run it in a sense as a for-profit. We actually find homeowners to purchase these properties so then they can be sold. And, and sometimes we turn a profit and sometimes we don't. But most of all, uh, our, our participants get training. A lot of times with these houses, what we'll do is we'll get in them, we'll teach them how to paint, how to do the plumbing, how to do the furnace, things like that. And then we have to sell it, maybe we get it rented and we may sell it to an investor who is also wanting to improve the neighborhood and we have to be selective in that. But all this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Home Depot. Home Depot supplies our materials and they are definitely a, a good piece that keeps us moving uh, into the future with all the supplies uh, that we need to make these houses livable again. I think it's gonna clean up really well. We'll make this yard really nice for the family. <laughs> he just broke the tree off. <laughs> Those that are new to the program, this is an opportunity for you to learn things. Those that have been with us for years, you understand the impact that we make. We're saving lives in this community and really making a difference. Nobody's gonna save and change our community but us. We have to rebuild our community from the inside out. A family's gonna live in this property that we put together in two days. In two days, Mark. In two days. So let's get it. Let's get it, all right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, yo. That's it, yo. I think the guys respect the fact that he has to be strong with them because these are grown men. How else are you gonna make grown men learn that there's better opportunities out here unless you're tough on them and you show them how the real world is. The real world's not easy and if they think that, then they're not gonna get anywhere in life with that attitude. So they have to be strong, they need to be on time, they need to be punctual, they need to come correct so that they can work. Okay, now we got that settled so we can get some work done now, right? All right. We're not gonna have that problem anymore? No, we ain't gonna have it. Okay, let's go, let's get some work done. They call me the drill sergeant, you know, but the, the real part of it is I really care and love these young men and these young women that are in the program. I really care about what they do in the future and how they grow to be successful. Um, so I can be somewhat of a hard ass when it comes to certain things, but it's really all about me really helping them and giving them what they really need and what they're missing at home. You know where you want to go, right? Right. Okay. So how are we going to do, how are we going to get there? I just gotta keep pushing, just keep pushing. And be on time. Be on time every and day. And keep your pants pulled up. Yep. And do everything you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Not get in trouble, no harm, no foul, right? Right. All right, because I believe in you. And I know you can make it. I tell you this every time I talk to you. So you probably think I'm kind of hard on you, but it's because I believe in you. You got so much potential. But you gotta bring it out. You gotta let it come out of you. I'm gonna help you, but you gotta do the work, okay? Let's get back to work. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in life. And one thing about it, you know, the, the jails and the cemeteries are full of young men and young women. You don't want to be in either one of those, do you? So let's make sure that we keep you out of that and keep your hands busy and keep you moving in the right positive direction, okay? This is reality TV that works. Startups made in Kansas City. Here we have a uh, set of entrepreneurs today that uh, are mapping out their strategy for, uh, for the growth cycle in this quarter. And using it at our open coffee bar, which any entrepreneur will tell you, the coffee is an essential part of every entrepreneur's life these days. My partner Herb and I, when we first started of this, really our ultimate goal was we had started companies on our own and we'd struggled at different times in our lives in starting these companies and we wanted a resource that we would have wanted when we started our first company. We started the place where entrepreneurs can walk in with an idea and walk out with a company. Herb came to me one day and asked, what was your biggest challenge in starting a business? And I said my biggest challenge was I had no idea what I was doing. I had no clue. I'd walked out of the practice of law with an idea and had never been involved in starting a business before. And I made a thousand mistakes in the launch of my first company. As entrepreneurs, we found that there are a lot of mistakes that we made. 
and we wanted to avoid those mistakes going forward. We wanted to surround ourselves with the best people in a place that we're excited to work, high energy level, a place where people are motivated not only by you know, finances but by passion. We started to talk about an idea to be that resource. It seemed like something that was missing, not just in Kansas City, but in a lot of communities around the country. A, uh, a real roll up your sleeves, get down, involved in the business and work with those individuals to allow them to achieve their potential. One of the principles that Think Big Partners is built on was we want to find a way to accelerate ideas. Accelerating ideas means that you're going to work at a very high cadence, be very disciplined in your milestones, understand what you're trying to achieve, and knowing most importantly that you're going to fail at about half of what you set out to do. Knowing that you're going to rip down what you built with the best of intentions, knowing that you're going to start again. We have an official accelerator program that allows companies that have a little bit more substance to them, they've been around for a while, get the assistance, resources, mentorship, funding that they need to really take them from an idea on the back of a cocktail napkin to a working, functioning company. And then we have a, an incubator that works with more well-established companies who have been around for a while but are looking for just a little bit of something to, uh, to spur their growth. There are over a thousand incubators in the United States today, and while many of them are very good, we found that incubators, the way that we applied it, weren't agile enough. And what I mean by that is that they don't move fast enough. They're a little bit more polished. We think that Think Big Partners is a little bit more of a sausage factory. What do I mean by that is, it may not always be pretty, but we get stuff done. And that's the real grit of entrepreneurship. There's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't always adequately explain what goes into it. It sounds very glamorous, sexy, cool, and interesting, but when you miss a meal, when you sweat payroll, when you're grinding it out, wanting to pull your hair out, if you are a successful entrepreneur, you've probably felt like you're having a heart attack, or you had insomnia, or you've challenged your relationships, or all three of the above at some point in your successful entrepreneurial life. So this is our fourth floor. It's our main floor. It's an open space designed specifically to promote collaboration among the companies that, uh, that work out of here. So the idea behind Think Big is not only do you have uh, traditional resources available to entrepreneurs, but we also have the ability for each of these companies to share with one another, to talk back and forth amongst themselves and decide what is the best way for them to reach their business goals as well as their personal goals. So the co-working space allows people the opportunity to start, to build, to grow, to be able to solve each other's problems through entrepreneurial collaboration. And so Think Big Partners, when we built the place we wanted to work, combined incubator, accelerator, co-working space, and the right people all around us to be able to get our jobs done fast. As these companies grow, as they continue to push themselves to be better, they're going to make mistakes from time to time. And we want everybody here to be able to learn, not only from their own mistakes, but from the mistakes of others, it allows them to grow and become better companies, more solid companies, and ultimately be fixtures in the Kansas City business community. This event tonight is actually called Great Minds Think Big, and the idea is that we bring one entrepreneur of one mind, in this case uh, an aerospace entrepreneur, Scott Tibbetts, and a different mind, Danny O'Neill from the roastery with coffee, and even though they seem like an unlikely match, we're looking for the collaboration and the ways that they do think big together. The biggest challenge that we have here at Think Big is sometimes we have to tell people that their baby is ugly, and this is, this is their baby. They put their life and their blood and their sweat and their money and oftentimes behind it. And you know, we need to tell them that this really isn't a great idea and there isn't a viable business opportunity here. It's a difficult decision to have, but we also think it's one that we owe it to the entrepreneur because rather than have that person spend two years of their lives and all of their life savings on an idea that was destined to fail, we think we're doing a service both to that individual and to the community to allow that person to pivot, to redeploy their resources and their ideas and their creative process in another way. On the fourth floor is really the area for the individual entrepreneur, or the solo person who's dipping their toe in the water, figuring out where their business is going to go, whether it's a viable business model or not. And when they get to a certain level of development in their company, we then have it set up so that they will graduate to the next floor, to the fifth floor. So up here, we have some of our more established companies, companies that have been in Think Big Partners for a little bit longer. One of our very first companies that ever came through the door, Planet Reuse here. Another company is an example of the types of companies that we tend to attract, a company called Phone to Action. Candy Cam, one of our uh, really high tech, this is their little lab and toys. This is uh, the place I'm not allowed to touch anything or play with anything up here for fear of breaking it. We like ideas that solve problems. We like good people that have a demonstrated track record. I'll give you an example. 
um, one of our uh, entrepreneurs right here, um, Scott Tibbetts. He's with a company called Katasi. I was working with a fellow that came up with an invention that was for hot water heaters in homes, and it was just the coolest thing. So I just started calling people up and found NASA. NASA said we can use this thing. So it was it was crazy. It was you know in a garage coming out of a hardware store and ended up on Mars. So the next venture has nothing to do with space. It's a, a telecom product, basically. It's a device that goes in a car, and then we in the internet cloud can figure out when you're driving. And from that, we can tell the carrier, the telecom carrier, to turn off texting. So it's a way to stop texting while driving that doesn't involve anything on the phone. It all happens in partnership with the telecom carrier. You know, I'm from Boulder, actually, Boulder, Colorado. But I made a connection here with Herb and Think Big, and there is such a strong, exciting entrepreneurial thing going on here in Kansas City that it makes sense for me to come down here and work with Think Big to help them with my next venture. So, you know, I'm here because I need this help in taking our next venture forward. The, the greatest thing about entrepreneurs is you see the enthusiasm, the excitement. They all are coming in something that they're incredibly passionate about. The idea, the business, the concept. The, the difficulty, as we've mentioned before, is that not all of those passions are viable businesses. You know, I had a uh, college roommate who was, his true passion was sleeping, and he was outstanding at it. He was really good, but to, to this day, I've never found anybody who's willing to pay him to do it. So we have a lot of companies that come through here who are extremely excited about, they're extremely uh, passionate about what they're building, but it, until they get through a certain level of their business life cycle, they're not sure whether it's viable, whether it's scalable. And so when we start to identify a company, when we start to look at them, not only are we looking for the idea, was it something that people would adopt? Is it something that, you know, lots and lots of users would uh, would take on, you have lots and lots of customers, but more is it something that has the ability to be sustainable. It's not a flash in the pan. It's not something, the next fad. We're not looking to uh, develop the next Pet Rock program here, but we're looking for companies that will be fixtures in the Kansas City community and have the potential to be the next Hallmark, the next Sprint, the next H&R Block, and continue the great tradition of entrepreneurship here in Kansas City. This is reality TV that works. Startups made in Kansas City. The practice first started seeing appointments, uh, I believe April 1st, 1998 was the first actual appointment day. Since then, Dr. Fries joined in 2001 and from the get-go we had a plan that we wanted to build a facility of some sort so that we could offer advanced care and keep our horses here in Kansas City and be able to try to service them without having to send them out to, uh, to other states or other cities for, for their work. You know, this obviously is a place where we care for horses and our, our obvious intent and our first priority is the health and well-being of horses. But we also have to run a business and if we don't if we cannot do that, then you know we'll have to close our doors, and so it's a team effort. Everybody here is, is, a, is a big part of this team. Uh, from the time you walk in the door, or you call on the phone, till somebody's meeting you at the trailer to help unload the horse, treat the horse, um, there's really nothing more rewarding than to see everybody here in action. Everybody knows what's going on and what needs to be done, and, and uh, you know, we, we, can, we can be extremely efficient. It's a total team approach to keep everybody going. Um, communication is the key with everybody in the hospital as well as our clients. That's a big part of why we're successful. We've, had, we've got great veterinarians, we've got great office staff, we've got great technicians, um, and we've been able to amass you know, the best clients in town, and that helps a lot too. You have to develop, either have them or develop human relations skills because you know, we love animals, we take care of animals, that's our priority, but the animal doesn't pay the bill. There's always an owner or a caregiver attached to that, to that horse. And as a result, you know, they have needs, they have wants, and we certainly have to service those. And that's part of the total care of the patient. So we have this unique relationship of what we call the client-patient-doctor relationship. We have good clients, good patients, and it's, it's a total team effort, and that allows us to, uh, you know, to keep doing what we're doing. 
I got interested in working with animals at an early age and then uh, got into vet school and found out I had a real passion for working on horses. And uh, my wife, we weren't married at the time, but she's been a horse person all her life and, and I think that had a pretty big influence on me as well. Lots of folks always wonder where we started out and in actuality Dr. Wilhite and I started in 2001 in his basement. Very good way to keep overhead down working out of the basement but uh, eventually it got to be a little, a little tough. By the time we had kids and uh, a couple of employees we decided that you know it had to quickly get out of the house in, uh, in order to stay married. So He had been a solo practitioner for about a year and a half at that point, a year and a half to two years. And the deal that we had made was that he would start here building up a clientele while I was getting the advanced training in surgery and that we would come together bringing, each of us bringing something to the table. And you know the growth of the practice also leads into the design of the building because we built this hospital to service our current needs but also to be, to be uh, efficient for any future needs. So it's, it's every inch of this facility is something that Dr. Wilhite and I are very proud of. And, and part of that is the investment of, of basically blood, sweat, and tears that put into putting this together. And certainly it's not even just about the, the planning, um, about the mortgage, about the payments. It, it's basically the whole, the whole package. And building a facility like this takes a lot of effort. Um, there are not many of these facilities. And as a result, there's not just a set of blueprints that you can basically pull off the internet. Each one of the horse hospitals, whether it's ours or one uh, in Texas or, or a university hospital, they're pretty much designer made. The height of this building is really all about this rail system. So in order to have this system where we can move horses, we needed to be able to or anticipate the biggest horse that we might ever have to lift. Norm is fantastic with the horses. He showed up and she found him under the wheel well of her truck. and. Um, I came in and I noticed that there was a cat in the hospital and that it was eating pizza. And uh, a couple of the staff members and Dr. Montgomery were worried whether or not Dr. Wilhite and I would let him stay. But I'm a smart enough businessman and, and uh, uh, boss to know that when your staff are feeding pizza to a cat and they've had it all weekend that I'm not getting rid of it. If we actually have a patient in the hospital, you can often find Norm outside their stall just hanging out and keeping them company. We basically take care of horses from the time they're bred to birth into old age. And we do what we call primary work. So we have horses that come to us for very basic care. We go out to the, to the stables or to the farms where they live. So as an ambulatory equine veterinarian, you're traveling to the farm, to the client. And so you have to, all your equipment and personnel has to be mobile where you can load it in a truck, unload it and set up. We try and be prompt, efficient, uh, but just there's always variables like today's rainy and uh, sometimes there's snow, so traveling on highways and byways can, can have its uh, variables and can slow you down. You get very little, if any, business education in, in veterinary school. They're, they've been changing that over the last few years, uh, trying to work that into the curriculums. But when Dr. Wilhite and I went through school, we certainly didn't have the ability to, to have those business courses. You know, we all go to veterinary school or any kind of a trade school to learn how to do our craft. And, you know, there's not a lot of time left over to learn how to run a business. And so some of that, unfortunately, you have to learn by making mistakes. Um, we've been fortunate to, to be in some groups and have some uh, mentors around us to help us, um, other veterinary practices and other business leaders. A lot of what we've done has been by trial and error and by, in some cases, luck. And certainly having a partner like him to lean on has been just uh, indispensable. Um, he and I are really good friends. That, I think, is one of the ways that we've been able to not only survive but thrive. I mean, how we've grown from two guys in the basement in 2001 to building this hospital in 2006 and now having basically six veterinarians dedicated to the horse. We're happy to do it because it's, uh, every day is, is fun and it's hard to complain when you're working with horses every day. A co-production of KCPT and Outpost Worldwide at home in Kansas City. Production, post, content.